Hey, this is Rolf with AdCap. Um, talk, here to talk about how an IP telephony system works. So a lot of y'all still have uh, traditional PV access out there. And there's a big move towards moving all phone systems to running over data networks. There's a lot of good reasons for that. There's a lot of cost savings from that. Um, but a lot of people kind of skip past that part and just start presenting quotes and things like that. I want to give you a basic explanation of from a system level diagram of how PBX works and then how we take that same functionality, translate it over into the IP world and then improve it above and beyond that. So if you all have a PBX or you remember what they're like, you can have this big monolithic box in the scary little phone room and it does a bunch of things. So we got a big box, it's got a couple power supplies, it's got to have reliable power, okay. it's got to have a, a controller, uh, the, the brains of the PBX, so sometimes it even has dual controllers for reliability. Then we got to connect to the outside world. So we'll connect to the public service telephone network, uh, you know, AT&T or Quest or somebody like that. And we'll connect in typically with a voice T1 or multiple voice T1s. You might call those a PRI. It gives you 23 channels of, of voice. And we can have multiple connections there. So this gives us the connection to the outside world, the brains, the operation. Okay, what else do we need? Well, we need to have uh, digital line cards, and digital line cards they then have to connect out to the big wiring block, either a 66 block or a 110 block on the wall, and then this goes out to where the handsets go, and so this connects to a digital handset. Um, and so we'll have multiple digital line cards to, to supply however many handsets that we need. And then we'll have analog line cards that again connect out to the big terminal block. And this will go out to analog handsets. So uh, this gives us a, a private branch exchange system. It connects us to the outside world. It gives everybody DIDs. It lets people call internally. It lets people call out. Um, and then we need to add some functionality onto this. Uh, it's above and beyond a typical P PBX. So what do we need? Now we need voicemail. So a lot of times you'll see a voicemail box. It'll look like a, a PC from 15 years ago that's sitting back there. Um, if, if you've got a, I guess it doesn't connect to the power supply. If you've got a call center, um, you might have an automatic call distribution system that's uh, connected into here. Um, maybe you'll have an interactive voice response system. Uh, and if you're getting really fancy, Maybe you'll have a call recording system, and a call recording system, you'll probably jam that into um, either the, the wires here or the wires here. It's kind of tricky to, to jam a call recording system into a traditional PBX. But anyway, there you go. All the functionality of a traditional PBX. And it's great because it's reliable. It doesn't change very often, but it does what it needs to do. Uh, periodically, you will have to have... Uh, upgrades to it and upgrades mean you pull out the controller and put the new one in. Those upgrades tend to be fairly expensive. Uh, you got to have a, a guy that really knows this whole system to come and work on it. So you probably need to have a service contract with the company so you can have someone come out and take care of the things whenever it needs to be taken care of. You got a new employee, you got someone that you got to move around. Someone's got to come out, tone out uh, how to move these wires around on the terminal block, or you've got to program in. After your, this PBX is really fancy, they might have put in an IP blade and connected into the Ethernet network. And then maybe you can do remote management from it or even chunk some IP phones out there. Um, those IP phones may or may not work well, and we'll talk about why that is in a minute. So anyway, this is all the PBX functionality that we've got to replicate in an IP phone system. So let's talk about how we do that. It's not very difficult. Um, an IP phone system really only has four major components. Uh, to it. So first of all, we have a good local area network. So what do I mean by a good local area network? Well, first of all, it's got to be reliable. And I have another video uh, on, on how to build a reliable network, so I'm not going to go into detail on that right now. Okay, It's got to be secure. If you're going to put your entire phone system over your data network, it's, it's got to be secure. It's got to have performance, and it's got, which means it's got to have quality of service. Quality of service is not really very tricky. It's just the ability to distinguish between um, data that has voice in it and data that doesn't have voice in it and be able to prioritize the voice over the other traffic. And it's got to have power because we want to deliver power to the handsets over the Ethernet network. We don't want to have to have a handset on the desk, plug it into the Ethernet network, then plug it into the, 
uh, power supply on the wall. First of all, those two things are in different locations most of the time. Second thing is if building power flickers, we want the phones to stay up. We don't want power to go out. So we don't have to put a UPS in addition to plugging it into the wall. We just put UPSs on uninterruptible power supplies on the local area network. So that's the first element. The second element, um, we're going to have handsets. So you already have wiring going out to your desk where you have a computer. And so we've got a, a PC or something else sitting there. So what we do is we just take a handset and connect it in to the same Ethernet cable and then connect the PC into that fit. So we don't have to pull any extra cable. So the handsets are, are provisioned for. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, we've got to have a controller. So we've got servers. Everybody's got a server room. And so we'll do the servers that do, do all the various controllers. So we'll have a call manager that does all the call processing. We'll have a voicemail server. We'll have uh, a call recording server if we need one. Uh, we can even have a, an ACD and an IVR server. And these are very straightforward to add because once you have the base system in, everything else uh, just plugs into it. And then the final thing that you need for a good phone system is that we have to connect into the public service telephone network. So we take a, an ordinary Cisco router and we put some voice cards into it uh, and some uh, voice technology into it. And we take that same public service telephone network and the same T1 and uh, connect into it. And this gives us our full phone system. Great, now I've just replicated exactly what we can do in the PBX. So there's not really any advantages here, although this is easier to manage, and it gives you a good excuse to upgrade your local area network. The big advantage comes when you have multiple locations. Because with a traditional PBX, you have to have a PBX in every location, and they typically tend to operate as islands all to themselves. Well, just like you wouldn't put an email server at every one of your organization's offices, you wouldn't put a voice server at every one of your offices. So if you have a wide area network, and uh, most folks do have a wide area network, or they have some kind of VPN over the internet, but it probably doesn't work as well as you want it to, and that wide area network these days is typically an MPLS network, multi-protocol label switching network, but anyway, it's their wide area network. And so each one of these sites is going to have a router, and then a switch, and then some users. And then the thing is that these phones just like this user can use email back on your email servers, well, this phone can register over this, uh, over the network to the phone. And so all your phones are part of one big phone system. Four digit dialing between every location, between every phone. Uh, all the features that are at a big uh, main office can be replicated to a branch site. Anywhere you can extend your data network to, you can extend your phone system to. But now we can start to get into cost savings. Because you see in this connection here, we have a wire network connection and a public service telephone network connection. Well, the great thing about IP voice is you can have your MPLS service provider deliver your voice as SIP, which means it's already in IP, and in every one of your locations, you can go ahead and get rid of these data T ones. Now, in some cases, you might have to add um, a second wide area network connection, but overall, if you can have your SIP, if your, your, your voice delivered, to every one of your sites through your MPLS network, through SIP trunking, you're starting to save money. You're starting to save probably about 800 bucks a month per T1 that you can cut off. That's a big deal. Now, the next thing is that, first of all, this gateway ends up being a survivable uh, remote gateway so that if there is a, a problem with the server here, these remote sites can still end up working uh, well. And We've got all the 911 stuff figured out. Um, so any, any issues or uh, problems that, that, that you might be concerned with, we've got answers to address all of those. We can even take it a step further because most folks, um, and you notice I haven't talked about sending voice over the Internet here. This is a business telephone system. This isn't some kind of uh, just you know Skype type system or, or things like that. This is a business telephone system. So now I'll talk about the internet. So if you want to connect to the internet, of course, through a firewall, and you want to have a VPN to mobile or home users, then you can connect people at home through this virtual network connection. Then you can have an office phone at home. And like I said, you can extend your phone system to wherever your data network is. So if you end up having wireless, and you have iPhones, 
or other types of phones. Um, these wireless phones can work in on the network as well. So you can see that an IP phone system is very straightforward in replication of a traditional PBX where we take all the functionality, we run it over a data network, we give it some additional um, productivity and money saving enhancements, and then we can go above and beyond anything that a traditional PBX can do. So all the way around, this is a good deal. It's very straightforward and it's something that you should do. Thanks.